All right, I don't know about y'all, but I had chill bumps that whole time. Amen. That was great. Uh, before we get started, I'm going to open up in a word of prayer, so if y'all bow your heads. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day and give us to come here just to worship you, Lord. We're just very thankful for that. Just bless everybody as we go our seven ways and just use me as a vessel, dear Lord, and speak through me something I've said. Touch somebody out here, dear Lord, and just help them have an open heart and an open ears, dear Lord, so they can be touched. And thank you for all the ones I was up here seeing, dear Lord. That was absolutely amazing. All for your glory, dear Lord. And do we pray. Amen. Amen. How's everybody doing this morning? Good, right. good. So, I'm going to be jumping around a little bit today. Got a bunch of verses. Uh, but the topic of the sermon today is discipleship. And discipleship, it's a, uh, when you become a Christian, you get saved, you have to do God's work. And it's not just going out there and getting all the ones that's uh, not saved. Discipleship is also getting the ones that's already saved. So, when you're a disciple, you got to go out there and you got to bring others to the Lord. And even the ones that's already found, you got to bring them closer to the Lord. And you grow in all of it. Amen. So I'm going to start off. You're either a hearer or a doer. That's two right there. A hearer or a doer. I'm going to be in James 1, 19 through 25 first. And it says, Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear. Slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away at once, forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and preserves, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he'll be blessed in his doing. Uh, Miss Martha, she always used to tell us when she was over the youth was, what would Jesus do? And if you want to be some of the best disciples, if you're, being, if you're a disciple, some of the best of them are not the ones that speak to you. Some of the best ones are the ones that act and you see. And I always tell all of us teenagers, whenever we have class in there, no matter how old you are, there's always somebody watching you. It can either be a kid watching you, it could be an adult watching you, or it could be it could be anything. So if you're a Christian and you want people to you want people to see that you're a Christian. You don't want them to have to come up and ask you, are you a Christian? You want them to see that you're a Christian. And that's being a doer, not a hearer. A hearer comes in, it comes to church, and they sit there and listen, and then all week they're just back out there doing their normal stuff, going and doing everything wrong. But a doer is one that comes in here, and he listens, and he learns, and he goes out throughout the week and also spreads that word, but he acts on what he's learning. You gotta act on what you hear and be a doer. Alright, uh I'm gonna go to just right up just flip right over James two or fourteen through twenty-six. Faith without works is dead, is what this is titled in the Bible. And I'm gonna read this for you. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warm and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. 
And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. That's just like I was just saying. If you're going out there, you want people to see that you're a Christian, not here. And you can have faith. But what's the point? What's the point of having faith if you don't have works to go along with it? And that's just like he was saying. You show me your faith without your work, and I'll show you my work with my or I'll show you I done lost it. <laughs> Right here. You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. That's just like. Well, actually, my next verse is what goes along with this. I'm just going to. So, what good is it to have faith but no works? You can, you can act. You can come out here. And that's just like the same one being a Christian and coming to church on Sundays. But then Sundays and Wednesdays, and like you're here whenever church is here, but you go out throughout the week and nobody can tell you're a Christian. They look at you and they're like a regular person. And the ones that do know you're a Christian, that you go to church, how do you think they think of you if they see you out there doing something wrong? No. So make sure you've always got to set the right example for everyone that's watching you. You never know what you're doing, your works can touch somebody without even saying anything to them. All right, I'm going to turn to Matthew 5, 13 through 16. All right. Salt and light. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are a light into the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. I don't know about y'all, but when I have a lamp, if I had a lamp and I lit it, I'm not going to put something over it. I was asking them. I was talking about this Wednesday night, too. I was like, why you going to light a lamp? What's, what's it for? So you can see. So if you cover it up, you just lift the lamp, but you still can't see, right? Well, this ties into our Christian life. When you get saved, you get that, you get that light inside of you. You get that, as Jessica was saying, you get that coal inside of you, the what somebody said, you get like a burning coal inside of you. It's burning hot. But you can let that go out. If you don't stay in your Bible, in your instructions right here, this tells you how to live everything you go through in your life. If you don't stay in it, that light or that cinder can go out. That's why you have, that's what being a disciple is. Like you go out and for the ones that's already saved, but they got that that's, they got that ember going out inside of them, that fire going out inside of them. You can help them come closer to the Lord and get it going back up. And you can't stop what happens if you build a fire and you stop putting wood in it. Wow. It goes out. That's just the same thing. If you become a Christian, you stop. If you just stop reading your Bible or stop following the Lord and studying it, you're just gonna. You're not gonna be like the Christian you was when you first started. Had that fire started inside of you. Your light will go out. So. And the thing about that is, is when people get saved and they have that life inside them, they're always, a lot of them, I was hobbled. A lot of people was hobbled. And that's one of the main things that can hold you back from spreading the word to other Christians or other people that need the word is being hobbled. And uh, for being, I don't know if any of y'all know, if everybody knows what hobbled is, but it's where it put on horses' feet where they can't move and run, where they can't run. It stops them. So, that's just like, when I, my, the thing that I cannot do is I cannot remember scripture. And that's where I'm hobbled at. Because when I go out to spread the word, or some kid comes up to ask me, I can't, I have to tell them, I'll get back with you. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'd rather be able to know my scripture so I can tell them. And that's where I'm hobbled at. 
But that's what everybody's hobbled by something. And until you give it all to the Lord, you're going to be hobbled and you're not going to be able to spread the word like you should be able to. All right. Point, uh, this right here is, goes along with the salt and light. And it's in Revelations 3, 15. And it's talking, it's a church in Odysseus, well, I think how it's pronounced. I'm not very good at pronouncing it. But this is him saying, this angel saying to the church, I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. With that you are either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. That's a that I know it's talking to the church, but that's talking to everybody. Yeah. This, this is not the church. This building. The church is everybody that's in here. And that's the church. And so we always I forgot we watched the movie uh, War Room. If any of y'all have ever seen it, it's a great movie. And she had a coffee, and the old lady was helping her with her Bible, and she was she was being a disciple. She was bringing her closer to God, and she got her coffee for her, and she got it lukewarm, and she got she drank it. She said she spit it out. She said she didn't like it. It's like that's just the Lord. He wants it either hot. He don't want it cold. He don't want it lukewarm. He wants you hot for the Lord. Yeah. And so that's just whenever you become a Christian, when you start. Being hobbled and straying away, that's what you become. Lukewarm. That lukewarm is when you come to church and then next week you're out there doing the same stuff you was doing or when you ask for forgiveness and then as soon as you ask for forgiveness, you turn right back around and do it. When you do something like that, you gotta have faith and you gotta use your works to show that you're doing it. And that's how you become hot for yeah. the Lord. Alright, uh, I'm gonna turn to Matthew. 7, 21 through 23. And in, it, in my Bible, it's uh, labeled, I never knew you. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name? And do many mighty works in your name. And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. That just goes back. What's the point of having faith if you don't have works? So. It's just like, I'm going to tie it into this. If you're riding a horse. And you're breaking a horse. And say it's a little broke, but all you got to do is ride it. And you saddle it up. And you say, horse, you're broke. And you don't get on it and put in your work for it. What's that going to do? So when you become a Christian, you got to do all the works. And no matter what you're going through, whatever works you're doing, you always go back to the Bible. It's your instruction. It's your, it's your manual. He tells you how to do everything, no matter what. But if you lose this, if you stop going into the Bible, that coal, that fire starts going out in you. So you always, no matter what you're going through, go to this and you can learn. And it helps you to be a disciple. To always reach out for the ones that need you, either they're saved or they're not. All right, so I'm fixing to close us in a word of prayer. Uh, so if everybody would bow your heads dear gracious heavenly father we're thankful for this wonderful day to get us to come here and just bless us all as we go our separate ways and just to bless us to be have that fire inside of us to Lord not to let it go out just to be disciples and reach out and touch other ones and touch all other Christians to Lord and also grow ourselves in you just to get in your Bible and study your word to Lord just help all the ones to in the hospital door, all the ones that need you, Lord, and I'm very grateful for all the praise reports you've given us, so Lord, we thank you for everything and do we pray. Amen. 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 Do I need no green sheets and stuff? Yeah. All right. Huh?
Green sheets. This is how you become a member of the church. You can uh, 